Cash. Yep, Cash was a great West Coast boy. He was really long, really long. Like one of those bulls that just barely fit in the chute. Everybody loved Cash. Yeah, he'd kick out of a right, kick out, fall the gate around the left. The whip that he created, the way he bucked and pivoted off his front feet, he had enough whip that when, when he put a guy down, he did it with some conviction. He slammed me so hard one time that it didn't knock me out, but it's probably the closest you can come to getting knocked out without actually going out. I was a bull that had a long career. I had watched him as a kid at the NFR. He would make the early PBR finals, lasted a long time, and only the best guys rode him. The ride that comes to mind is Tater Porter at the, at the World Finals. Let's go to Tater Porter. Yeah, here we go. Two jumps to the left. Here we, we come, go. left. Right around there. Come on, Tater Porter. Don't lose that road ride. Right up. Stay right and look at home. As you win him. And just, just beautiful, beautiful ride. He was a really, really, really neat bull. Back then, everybody liked Cash, I think. <laughs> if not, at least his name was cool. <laughs> White Magic was Diamond G's bucking bull, and he was a great bull, bucking bull. He's just a little ball of muscles. He wasn't a big bull, but he had muscles everywhere. Double muscle, ripped up, just good looking as I come. He kicked so hard that he was a little bit like Big Bucks, where he kicked so hard that his back might hit a rider between the shoulder blades. When he dropped, he, he dropped so hard, it was so vertical, like his head disappeared. Like he didn't know where he was at. And all of a sudden, his rear would hit you in the back and just, just you know, catapult you. You know, where a lot of bulls just come out and spin, he actually just, he'd do some crazy, funky stuff. and. White Magic pretty much threw me out of the arena in California. Justin McBride was one of the best guys going at the time. Justin McBride and White Magic trying to get his left foot. He put it back down. And he bucked him off pretty handily. If you screw up, it's going to hurt. He was a champion, you know, and especially when you, when you talk about those uh, West Coast Bulls. War dance. <laughs> War dance, <laughs> he was something else. Uh, smokeless war dance, he was a great bucking bull. In the right hands, I think he's a world champion bucking bull. Every time that I wash my face, I remember war dance. I got plates behind my eyeball, broke that bone right here, I don't know, cheekbone, I think. His career wasn't managed as well as, as some of the other bulls' careers were, and he came through every time, and he was a champion in the PRCA, and and he was a top bull in the PBR. I really liked that bull. Ward Downs was a he rank, rank dude and bucked for a long, long time. Best ride I ever remember on War Downs was, was Chris Shivers riding him at Phoenix. Out he goes. It's to the left as expected. Shivers waving that free arm over his hand. He's got a seat on the rank one. The reverse at five seconds. Shivers rides. And it was a really uh, good ride, but it was a typical Chris Shivers war dance thing. It was just two champions going at it, and very few, very few times did he get ridden. War dance is one of the best bulls we ever had. We ever had. If it was this ever right now, he would be a celebrity. What a cool bull in Panhandle Slam. Goodness. I wish he was still around today. And Panhandle Slim was little, and if you messed with him, man, he could get stupid in there and hurt a guy inside the chute. Fast, smart, either direction. And I don't even know if he liked his self. Like, he was just a little mean sucker. He went to the left, and I think I'd have got along really good with him. He was one of the rankest, and, and he wasn't ridden all that often. He was a world champion, and um, the length of time he went and the guys that he bucked off, really is pretty special for a bull that weighed probably 1,200 pounds. Ty Murray at our world finals in 99. For the rest of us, we didn't ride so well, but to be there in that moment and watch it was really great. World champion round to the right. Come on, Ty Murray. Get after him, Putin. Come on. Buddy. He'd run the length of you if you got, he, he got the chance. So he was the whole package. Voodoo Child was underrated. He, he knew where his power zone was. Udo Child was young, and he shows up, and he's great. And then a couple years later, you look up, and they still haven't ridden him. Uh, what a great boy. I've seen great rides on him. Just consistent and great all of this time. The riders are starting to talk like he's got a little something to him that, that I don't really want him. I don't really want that bull. And you couldn't see what it was. And he would 
uh, like kind of almost play chess with you a little bit of like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put you in this situation and then wham, I'm gonna drop the hammer. Cody Lostro on Voodoo Chow, I don't even know if he wrote it. Earlier this year, but Cody Lostro's a different man now. Look at him work that outside leg and by got it, he lost the rope. Voodoo Chow wasn't one that everybody else in the locker room wished they could ride or hope they didn't draw. Thomas Lamb was big and muscular. Big old white bull, super big, super heavy, and had a lot of ability. Now that bull was huge. I think he had muscles in his ears. But I remember him being a, a really athletic bull. He was pretty damn big to, to be as athletic as he was. Promised Land took uh, several guys into the high 90s. Look at the lead, look at the score, 95 and a half points for Dusty I remember Chris Shivers riding him, and Chris looked like a fly on his back. Little old bitty Chris is on this gigantic bull, and, and it was that was probably one of the memorable rides on him. Jim Sharp had a lot of big scores. I remember a ride on Promised Land in Fort Worth, and it was just poetic. Jim Sharp on Promised Land is going. It was incredible and big score, big moment. Pearl Harbor, the greatest bull to never have won a world title. He was claustrophobic in the shoe. He was kind of long and lanky. For him to stretch his body out like he did, holy moly. If you spooked him, he could jump 10 feet sideways and like a cat and just land on his feet and just from, from one LA side to the other. He was just, he was just a phenomenal athlete. And that bull was so smart. You get one inch one way, he's gonna feel you and go away from you. J.B. Mooney, that, rings a bell in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Uh, I think one of the greatest bull rides in the PBR history of PBR. The Moody Mystique <laughs> lives on. He bucked so dang hard with him. Pearl Harbor, in my opinion, was the rankest bull that I ever got on. That's the only bull I've ever been on and made money on that I didn't make the eight seconds on. Hey, hey, hey. Yo, yo. Cooper Davis gets thrown down like a lawn dart. I never got him rode. He'd walk so high-headed and like he was proud of himself, and he should have been because he was one of the baddest there has ever been.